Welcome to Jets Rewind. I'm Marty Shupak, joined by uh, Ralph Sharag in Massachusetts, Ray Clifford in Ohio. Ralph, you notice I always say Massachusetts now because I don't know where you are. You I don't know where I don't know where I am either. Uh... Right, so whatever it is. But um, yeah, hey, listen, I got a trivia question before we start. I just want to, I want to send uh, condolences out from all three of us to this family of Dale Mooney who apparently died in the stands in Gillette Stadium uh, last week when they were playing the Dolphins. And they were investigating, and it was something, they don't know if it was a medical thing or it was when they hit him and he hit his head. It's just a shame. You shouldn't go to a ball game and have to uh, really have fear from your life. And, I, you know, the whole key to this, Ray, and you'll probably agree, even though you're, you're a beer drinker, is the selling of alcohol. Right, Ray? Well, that obviously can be part of it. I mean, believe me, I see enough of it down here. Just Browns fans are bad. Uh, Ohio State students are some of the some of the worst at getting uh, getting tanked up on game day, and uh, especially when it's Michigan. Usually, there are couches being burned. But yeah, you shouldn't want to have to go to a game and you know worry about whether or not you're going to leave safely or not. But um, that's today's I, world. Especially so. if you have a family. And I think uh, I, I I get mixed reports that the son had to witness it. So uh, it, it's a horrible situation, but we're here to talk about the Jets. So let's do that. I'm going to start with a trivia question. I don't know, uh, Ralph, if this was asked before or not. It may be. You could tell me. But here we go. Two New York Jets quarterbacks hold the franchise record for most completed passes in the game. Who are they? And I'll give you a hint. Two Jets quarterbacks hold the franchise record for most completed passes in a game. Mm. Who are they? And the hint is it's post-1980. Okay? <laughs> so th think about it. I'm not so going to the last 40 years, not the last. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Yeah, the last so, 40 years. Right, right. But look, I don't know. One of these has got to be a tough one, I would imagine. Uh, well, well, we'll come back to it. Yeah. Just, just think about it. And I, I won't. Uh -huh. give you, does it matter if I give you the number? It really doesn't matter. Yeah, give me the number. The number is there were 42 completions. Wow. Okay. All right. And I ended up, I looked at the box score. So I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a detail. But, you know, the Jets play the uh, Patriots tomorrow, and the conditions aren't going to be uh, great for the fans and maybe some of the players. It's going to be pouring. Yeah, but we have that good turf, though. So we're not going to have to worry. Oh, yeah, the good turf. But, um, you, you, you know, and I'm the biggest Zach Wilson basher, as Ray could confirm. But I, I just wanted to start out, and I'll start with Ray. Ray, do you think, you know, we always talk about putting players in the best position to win. Even though this is Zach Wilson's third year, I, I think he's still 23 years old, yeah, which, is, which, is, which is relatively young. And, you know, <clears throat> you could say, look, look, look what happened to uh, Geno Smith after uh, 11 or 12 years. You know, he, he, he became a butterfly or whatever. You know, he's doing well. But, Ray, do you think the Jets offense is geared to Zach Wilson's strength right now? I don't think it ever has been because I don't think they trust him enough to uh, do the things he does well without being reckless about it is not my only guess because uh, the offense seems different. You know, it seemed different so far with Zach as opposed to obviously Rogers. It was different with Flacco and uh, Mike White versus Zach. I don't know if, you know, but I don't know if that's just coaching. I don't know if that's something in with Zach too. I don't know if they're calling the plays differently or if he's just not seeing things differently. But I do think coaching is part of it. I think they don't trust him enough to to you know open up the playbook and let him go. But at some point, you know, you gotta just go for it. I mean, you're in a you're at a, you're at a stage where you just can't coddle him and, and try and work your way through all these games. We're going to be, you know, one and eight when they get done, if they keep doing it this way, they've got to just 
see if he can do it or not. And if not, get somebody else in here. That's the way I, I feel about it. Raph, I, I want your opinion. And would you say that um, the, I, I'm guessing the uh, everything was geared towards Aaron Rodgers and we he went down. It was a shock. They had to, um, you know, put Zach in the first game. Uh, fortunately, they came back with a win. He was down 13 to three. And again, I'm the biggest Zach Basher, but he got us back there. We had that great uh, punt return. But, Ralph, do you, do you think that Hackett was just playing it a little too conservative last week? And and do you think that he's got to open up the playbook? And I'll repeat the question. Do you think the offense is geared towards Zach's strength? And how do we do that? Uh, I don't think uh, it matters whether they open up the playbook or not if their offensive line doesn't block. They were terrible last week, and they've been pretty lousy for most of his career and Sam Darnold's career. And, you know, these guys, a lot of it's on them. <clears throat> but a lot of the reason the Jets quarterbacks have been failing is because their offensive line has stunk for many years. I mean, how many how many hires have we had for offensive line coaches where they said, this guy is one of the best in the business, you know, and, he, and then the team, the offensive line stinks. And it's happening again this year with Keith Carter. Uh, we'll see. Give him a little more time. Uh, I think they are going to still coddle him because they won five games with him last year when they coddled him. They beat Buffalo the opening game and they coddled him. And I think that's really, I think, the formula that they think will work with him. I think if you cut him loose, he's going to start throwing interceptions. Uh, and I think the key is their offensive lines got to, you know, get the running game going. So it makes his job a little easier, but I, I don't expect they're going to open it up for him. So, so okay, so Ralph, uh, we all agree the offensive line stinks. They didn't gear uh, the drafts like I guess the Detroit Lions have have a very good offensive line. Okay, uh, you get a call in a half hour, Ralph. Come on down. We're going to give you five million dollars for the game. You're going to write out the first ten plays. What would it be from Ralph Sharega? For Zach Wilson, for me, I, like I said last week, I would do the you know what's opposite. I, I'd pass on on running downs and I'd run on passing downs, even if it meant you know giving up the ball, just not putting him in positions where he's going to screw up. Uh, a lot of first down play action, rollout <laughs> stuff like that. Not all the time, but a lot. Third and shorts, like one and two yards, I'd pass. Third and five and six, I'd try draws and screens. Uh, they didn't do any of that last week. You know, they were very predictable, the same stuff. It still looked like Mike LaFleur 2.0. Um, it's, it was only the first week that Hackett, you know, game plan for Wilson. So we'll see. But I think that the combination of Wilson's uh, history and his history with Belichick, they're going to play it close to the vest and think they can beat the Patriots straight up, which I think they can. Last year, Wilson's two worst games were against the Patriots, and they were both winnable games, even though he absolutely melted down. So I, I think they, they think they're a better team than them, and I think they're going to try and beat them in the lines this week. Ray, I'm going to go back to you. Again, let's say they, you got a call in a half hour. They fly you down. They want you to script the first five plays for Zach Wilson. Just give me an idea. What would you do? Assuming we all know the offensive line stinks. So how would you agree with right. Ralph, or would you do anything else? Well, I think, well, first of all, I, I, when I made my comment about what I think they should, it was what I think they do. I, I agree with Ralph. I don't think they'll ever open up the playbook for him because they don't trust him enough to. I, I think it's going to be much of the same stuff. I, I agree with that. I'm just saying for me, they've coddled him long enough. And, and the, the offensive line has stunk for everybody, but not every quarterback looks like Zach does. So it's it's not just the line. It's got to be something with play calls and it's got to be something on on Zach too so but if if I was doing it yeah you look Belichick takes away your strength if this team thinks running the ball is the the key with Zach he's going to shut down the run there's no doubt about it he he wants it all on Zach's shoulders so he's gonna he's gonna try and put him in third and long every single time and so he's we aren't if we're relying on the running game in this game, it's going to be a really, uh, a real, the, the offensive line is really going to have to step up and improve over last week by a mile because uh, running is not going to be easy, but yeah, you got to mix it up. But you, 
you can't get totally away from your game plan because that's Belichick's other thing is to get you off your game plan and, and do things you don't normally do. And, and that never generally goes well, at least for the Jets. You got to you got to work your strengths. But right now, I'm not sure what our strengths are if, if our offensive line can't hold up. I mean, if we can't run the ball and we get in a long passing, you know, yardage on third, then he's just going to bring Judon and the others and make Zach, you know, pressure Zach and try and get him to screw up or just shut the play down. Right. So. Ray, Ray um, I had brought this up and uh, – if you were offensive coordinator, coordinator, would you put like one or two plays with, where Zach keeps the ball in a safe way and does like a, a, a run, a rollout run? Because I think one of his strengths yeah. is he's a very good runner. I just, I just think Ray that they're scared that he's going to get hurt. Well, I'm sure that's part of it too, but you can't, you know. You can't coach that way because injuries are going to happen. Injuries can happen when you don't plan a run. So as we've seen already, but uh, you know, you got to work the guy's strengths and, and quite honestly, uh, uh, that's one of the things that has always given Belichick fits is guys who are athletic and can run like a Mahomes and like a Lamar Jackson and guys like that who can get out and do things and run the ball if he doesn't fear him doing any of that stuff, then then he's just gonna he's just gonna be in Zach's head all day with all the movement and all the changing around. You can't you can't just watch tape on Belichick because he will inevitably give you a look that you see on every other in every other film you look at, and then and he does something different. So you gotta you gotta give him something to fear, and I think Zach being mobile is one thing that has always given him even Belichick problems as a mobile quarterback. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to touch on some of that when I give you guys my, um, my key points for the jets to win, but you know, Ralph Ray brought up something good and, and I want you to uh, confirm it because it seems that Belichick is at, at the best when he has tape to review. But going back years, I remember that opening game against Miami um, when they did the what, – what was it called? The running back was the quarterback. You know, the – Wildcat. Yeah. Wildcat. Wildcat. Remember that? The introduction? Yeah. And he had no yep. idea how to defend that. So, Ralph, is there anything new they could do this game besides what you said? Because I actually – just to give you a hint, one of my keys for the Jets to win is to do a hurry-up offense. Well, that would be great. I've been saying that for a year, two years since he got there. Since it was obvious he was struggling, <clears throat> I thought that was a, a, an idea. And, and, you know, they haven't done it so far. We'll see. I, I'd be great, but I, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Yeah. Now, Ralph, if they if they lose to the Patriots, is the clock ticking on Robert Sala? Because going into the game, his record as a head coach is 12-24, and 24. And he's lost going into the game four straight times to the Patriots. So if they lose, is the clock ticking on him? Well, you know, the irony with Salah is that the <clears throat> the biggest disaster of this season is the injury to Aaron Rodgers. But I also think it saves his job if he has a bad year this year. I don't think the clock is ticking. I think Woody Johnson knows that the season basically got ruined by that play. If I think anything that the Jets accomplish this year is gravy for Salah. Uh, and uh, I think they bought themselves another year. I know they didn't want to do it that way, but uh, I, I don't see how they could fire him. Uh, well, let, let, let me ask you this, because, Ralph, everyone's talking about a lot of Jeff already, already n next year with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Are we a hundred? Are you 100% sure he's coming back next year? I'm 100% sure he wants to come back, you know. I mean, injuries you never know about. But uh, so I would say you can't say 100% he will. But I think if he's capable, he will, definitely. Yeah. Ray, do you think the clock's ticking on Sal if he loses tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Um, I think the only way it's clicking on him and Douglas is if this season is a like a complete disaster where we, you know, go – 
three and 14 or something stupid like that. But I mean, as I think if he stays <clears throat> anywhere near 500, he's he'll, they'll be back. I don't, I don't think you can, you know, you, you can't hold him accountable for what happened to Rogers and, and, you know, this whole, I, I'm not, I wasn't sold that we were going to the Super Bowl, but I, I did think we'd make the playoffs with Rogers. Um, but, uh, but I don't know, you know, that you can fault him for that kind of an injury to that person. Right, right. Um, and Ray, if they do lose, what are the chances out of 10 that they sign a quarterback this week? I see other teams signing quarterbacks, guys. Some I heard of, some I don't. But people, the other teams are doing it. So I, I mean, I know uh, the Bengals. Are we waiting? You know, why haven't we signed one? I don't understand this idea. That I mean, some some things that the Jets do, I just feel they're always backwards about, and and this is one of them. Last year, they didn't learn anything from last year with nobody in the quarterback room. Um, they didn't. They they just think they can move on with two really less than experienced guys and everything thing will be fine and maybe maybe they think uh rogers is gonna at least come back and be in the quarterback room and help him that way i, I don't know what they're thinking but to me no veteran who has experience in you know it, with things like this i mean zach's zach's only experiences are bad <laughs> so hey, give me a percentage of, of them signing another quarterback if they lose this week is it 50 percent 80 percent Pick a number. If, they lose, if, if Zach looks bad, because they, I mean, Zach could play a good game and and they could still lose, but. That would be um, incredible. If Ray, 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 if Zach plays a good game and they lose with the Jets defense, I just want to say this. I'm not saying it can't happen. That would be incredible. Well, when I say a good game, doesn't mean we're scoring 30 points. Good right? game for, a, a good, good game, game for, a good game for Zach. Now, last week, yeah. a lot of people thought that's, that was a pretty good game for Zach. He threw a couple of picks at the end when the game was out right. of reach. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I say if, if they have a meltdown, if he has one of his meltdowns, yeah, they'll get some. Then I say, yeah. yeah, they'll get somebody for sure. And and they they might anyway, but I think the percentage right. goes up based on – or down yeah. based on his play. <clears throat> right. You know, one thing I want to discuss, I put on the agenda and I, I brought it up and I haven't heard anything. The Jets drafted this uh, Max Mitchell, I guess it was uh, in the uh, 22 draft. And was it the fourth <clears throat> round, Ralph? One of the yeah, fourth, fourth round? round yeah, yeah. And, and he showed uh, some promise in some games. And in particular, I remember that one game where he, he sprinted like a uh, uh, running back to get a fumble. And then it came out that he had this blood clot issue, and then he's under medication and whatever. He's been unactive the first two games. Ralph, what do you take of it? Do you think it, they're not telling us something, or he's just not the same, or it's affecting him more than they thought? What do you think? I don't know if it's affecting him. He didn't have a great uh, you know, training camp. He didn't? Uh, no, he didn't. Um, but... Uh... I read recently in the last day or so that, you know, if Dwayne Brown can't go, we're very confident in Billy Turner and Max Mitchell. So I don't think, I don't think he's got an injury or anything. Um, but I, I don't think that's the way to go. If Dwayne Brown is hurt, I think, you know, you've got to put your best five guys out there, which would be AVT and Joe Tipman, as far as I'm concerned, you know, Billy Turner's ridiculous. He's worse than D Dwayne Brown. You know, if they're going to hitch their wagon to those guys, then good luck. You know, they, their job should be on the line. Ralph, should we, uh, you know, with all these, we give it out all these awards, the um, the David Clowney Award, the Tremaine Johnson Award, which I'll get into again. Should we give out a, and a lot of old Jet fans don't know, a Sam Walton Award? You remember him? <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Uh, Ike Lassiter? Yeah, Baltimore well, Colts wish they uh, remember him because uh, they didn't let him play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and they, that was one of the reasons they won the game. Uh, yeah, uh, the yeah. Sam Walton Award. Wow, we, well, there'd be a lot of candidates for that every uh, preseason, that's for sure. They would, they would. Uh, Ray, do you think the Jets will activate my guy, Will McDonald, this weekend? Uh, 
I was surprised he wasn't active last week, but yeah, I mean that I hope so. I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see more of him on the field and, but uh, I, you know, I don't know. It won't surprise me necessarily if they don't, depending on uh, how he practiced and um, they're, they're going to go with that. I mean, Huff, Huff's still to me, uh, a great option and and if mcdonald's in there then huff's going to get less plays so <clears throat> you know it's fine but i think i think mcdonald still has to put on a little weight and just you know keep working hard during practice and he'll be on there all the time pretty soon i would take you know what i would you know you might not agree but i would take plays away from jermaine johnson before to take away from huff to be honest with you, he had a great preseason. He looked okay, but he hasn't really stood out tremendously. From what I see, I mean, passing play, uh, Huff is a, without a doubt, a best pass rusher. So if we got McDonald in there, I would take some plays away from uh, Jermaine Johnson. That's my opinion. Ralph, what's your feelings on that? I think he will play for a couple of reasons. First, again, I just read Salah said he had a good week of practice. And secondly, they had no pass rush last week, so they got to try something different. Give someone else a shot. Uh, Carl Lawson, I think I'd take some plays away from him. Um, you know, Jermaine Johnson is pretty good on the run. So I think yes. on running plays, he, he's going to be in there. He's, yeah. um, But, uh, yes, I do think McDonald will play. Uh, and I hope he plays well because I want him to become an established player really quickly because they need it. Right, right. All right, let's. Uh, we're gonna have some fun now. Let's do some over unders. I don't know if they will. After fifty years of frustration, we're gonna have fun. Good, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ray, isn't it fun watching the Jets play on TV? Oh, I'm like all, always. You know, it's just like a party. It's so much. It's a blast. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm always. <laughs> happy for about 30 seconds into the game right. and i started well the funny thing is that the opening game was one of the most dramatic wins they've had in their history and it was still a bummer <laughs> oh, it was yeah. still a total bummer <laughs> 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 it's unbelievable you know you, you can't write it it's just incredible it really is but we'll have a fun with a few uh over on this because we're here to have fun Sports are supposed to be fun. <laughs> so yeah. here we here we go. And Ralph, if you Ralph, you think a lot quicker than I do. So while I'm going through this, if you think of one or two, you could add. All right. Over on this, let's assume it's not as Ralph said, Ray, it's not pouring, it's drizzling during game time, but the field is wet. So we have the conditions down. Two and a half interceptions, Zach Wilson, Ray, over or under. Until I see him uh, do better against the Patriots, I'm going to go over. Wow. I don't see how they could win if he throws uh, like three or more. I just don't see it. Uh, Ralph, how about you? Over I, I, I think two's a good number. I'll go under. You go under. Yeah, I would go under also. All right, Ralph, I'll start with you. Brees Hall, who only had, I guess, four touches last game. Is that, is that right? Or five touches? Uh, I put nine and a half touches this week. Would you take the over or under? That includes yeah. running plays and pass reception. Oh, I, I go over with that. Yeah, definitely. I think they realize they're going to have to uh, use him more. Um, right. I, I think they'll have more success against the Patriots. They're not as good as Dallas. Okay. Uh, Ray, over under Brees Hall, nine and a half touches. Yeah, I'm going over. I think they'll uh, stick with the run a little more this week, uh, barring that uh, our defense uh, or assuming our defense plays a lot better than they did last week. And, you know, it isn't right. Right. Points. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll start with Ray. Ralph, who's the uh, this uh, uh, number one draft pick on the defensive back? His name's Gonzalez. Yeah. Christian Gonzalez. They Christian. like what they, they like what they see so far. From yeah. Him. So he, yeah. Cause that, this might have something to do with the next question. I don't know if they're going to put him on Garrett Wilson or, or the other guy, but Ray, um, Garrett Wilson receptions, five and a half over or under. Under, I mean, I don't think uh, how many is he, what's the most he's ever caught from Zach in a game. <laughs> I, I don't even four, know. Three or four? I don't either, but it's never been a lot. So I'm going to say under. I mean, if anybody, if Belichick always, like they say, takes away mm. your favorite guy, they're going to take away Wilson. Okay, Ralph, what do you say? Yeah, oh. I go under. 
Yeah, I, I think so too. All right, Ralph, next one's easy. I hope. Quinn and Williams, one and a half sacks <laughs> over under. Uh that's an interesting one because uh I don't forget he uh, takes Belichick takes away the best yeah. player on offense and the best player on defense. I I'll say over. Um, and just to add to that, do you know how many sacks the Jets had on Mac Jones last year in both games combined? Uh, 11. Ray? Nine. 12. They had six in each wow. game. Williams had one in each game. Um, so I I think they're going to sack him a lot. I think he's not mobile, and uh, the, their offensive line is not that good. So uh, I think it's a good matchup for the Jets. Right. Okay. Um, all right, what about uh, you, Ray, over under Queen and Williams, one and a half? I like how Queen is playing so far. I'm, I'm going over. Okay. I say he'll get at least two. I, I am too. Okay, I am too. Hey, Ray, I want to ask you, and I'll ask Ralph, do you know what the hottest ticket in sports is right now to buy? Take a guess. Uh, it's New York and Liberty. All over the world, or uh, no, I, I, I'll tell you, this is interesting because as um, Colorado is getting ready to play Oregon, or oh. it's like <laughs> no, no, but listen, right? That's that's not it. The hottest ticket right now is the sideline pass in two weeks when they play USC. Apparently, uh, LeBron's gonna be there. Um, um, I heard Tom Brady's gonna be in the sidelines, maybe Spike Lee. It's 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 in Los Angeles. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah. that that's the hottest ticket. It should be. This is an interesting game. Any feelings quickly before we get into my keys to the Jets? Yeah, I think USC, USC will kick their butt. On what about Oregon? I, they don't have, I guess, Travis Hunter today. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I didn't thought about that one. Uh, okay. Uh, Go ahead, Ralph. No, Any, no. All right. We're going to cut here. I'm going to give you my keys for the Jets win because I, I, and I know we all know over the years, Belichick always listens to yeah. our podcast. Before you do that, Mario, I want to give you one stat that might help you out. Go ahead. In the two games last year, how many times did Mac Jones get the Patriots a touchdown? I'm going to say none. <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. Well, what was it? How many times did he? How many times did uh, the like Patriots kind of drive, score, yeah. score, score an offensive touchdown? End yeah. up with a touchdown. Yeah. One. That's right, one. Okay, I knew it was very low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is, is, which is really yeah. incredible. You know, it, it's just amazing. All right, Ralph, could you give me a little NFL background music? Could you hum as I give you my dun, 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 right, Here's my key dun, dun, to the Jets dun, win. And then I'm going to get reaction dun, 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 both of you guys. Dun, dun, dun. We alluded to this and Ralph brought it up. I wanted to come out in a hurry up offense. And again, we, we all said the same thing. When Zach doesn't have to think for a long period of time, he's much better. I would also like to have him come out passing. Uh, Ralph had mentioned do the opposite what they expect. Not quite the opposite, but I want him to pass. I want him, even though it'll take away part of the field, I want them to have a moving pocket. I also want Salad to be creative. If it is really raining hard, you got to play field position. Don't be afraid if you have to do something. I don't know who would do it, like a quick kick on a third down. If you're, let's say, on the your own 45-yard line or something like that, field position is a key. Also, I would play and use Xavier Gibson more as a receiver. I want speed on the field. Jeremy Ruckett, he's got to play more plays. He played like six last week. And I want McCall Hardman on the field, less <laughs> Alan Lazard and limit Randall Cobb. I would activate Izzy Abandaconda just because if the conditions are bad, I want to go with an extra running back and take away, maybe not have another receiver. I want to have speed on the field, though. I also want to have three safeties and two linebackers on most plays, and I want one of the safeties, because I know Belichick is going to want to throw short passes into the flat. I want one safety. I don't care who it is. It could be Amos. Any. I don't know if um, what's-his-name is playing Adams, 
but I want no, one, he's not. I he's guess. not. All right. Yeah. I want one of them to spy on Ramondre Stevenson. This guy is a good player. Uh, in in uh, last year, he had over a thousand yards. He had sixty nine receptions. Take him out of the game. That's what I want to do. If they do all these things, I really do believe the Jets are going to be put in a better position. I don't want to say best position because maybe you guys have uh, smarter keys that they could do, but that'll put them in a better position to win. So I'll start with Ralph. Ralph, give me your reaction to Marty's keys to the Jets win. Well, yeah, I mean, I like, uh, you know, the hurry up. uh, uh, But, uh, you know, to me, they got to win the uh, line battle. If they if they're a better team in the lines, they're going to win the game. Uh, uh, less exposure for Zach. Uh, roll them out, yes. Pass a lot. Uh, I would say you know short passes. Get it out quickly. I don't know why. You know Mike White can get him out quickly, and Aaron Rodgers and the little he played in preseason quickly. I don't know why he hesitates all the time. You know, just create plays where there's a guy open and flat. Yeah, Brees Hall, I'd like to get him the ball in space. He's he's absolutely dynamite that way, you know. Just, just uh, yeah, I would continue to just pound away with a little of the short stuff. You know, like Roger's philosophy, just take what they give, take what they give until they come up close, and then you go down the field. But uh, I think you got it, Marty. I think the game is a winner already. Yeah, what do you, do you like the idea? I know they, they, they have – Pretty good tight ends, but having a spy in Ramondre Stevenson. Well, he hasn't done much so far this year. They've been a real pass heavy with uh, with Mac Jones, actually. Uh, but he hurt the Jets last year. He did. You have to tackle him. Uh, you can't you can't uh, half ass it. Uh, and uh, he broke a lot of tackles, so you, you have to be careful. I just think I, I think another key is, and I think this is, I think the Jets will have a lot more energy than they had last week. They were flat, and I. I think this week being at home and uh, going against the Patriots and, and being embarrassed last week, I, and I'm sure they heard it from Salah, uh, you're going to see a different team, and I think that's going to make the difference, actually. Okay. Ray, any reaction to my, Marty's keys to the Jets win, and maybe you want to add some of Ray's keys? Um, no, I mean, I don't think we'll see Abba and I don't uh, – I don't expect to. I, I think they're going to keep going with the guys they trust and, and everything. I would like to see more record. I agree with that. I agree with the the hurry up would be a good change of pace. I think Ralph was right, and I, I, I I've always thought the line is the going to be the key to this this and any other game is both sides of the ball. Um, don't let the other team run, and we've got to be able to run at least a little bit. Um, we can't. We can't be just a pass only team, uh, but if we are, move them around, get Zach out of the pocket, let him run. You know, all that stuff is good. They, you know, but move the ball. Don't through these. We can't be doing constant three and outs. And I don't blame that on last week at all because our defense was not gassed and they were getting the ball moved on them. So I think the defensive line and pressure and not letting him run the ball is big on the defense. So um, the, the only, you know, as much as, you know, you say the Jets were embarrassed, so they should play better. Well, <clears throat> this would be, was going to be my question to you guys. You know, I don't know if we're going to do a prediction thing, but has Belichick ever lost three straight as the coach of the Patriots? And I have never looked it up. So this isn't a trivia question. I don't know the answer myself. Mm-hmm. But I know it hasn't happened very often. If he ever has with the well, pa- if it Patriots, did, it, um, if it did, it would have been in his first year when they went five, year, and, so, five yeah. and eleven. Yeah. I don't know if they did or didn't, but I, that's a good thing because there's always a first time for everything, right? <laughs> right. I, I, I set a new record. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, Ralph, th- their tight ends are pretty good too, right? Because well, that's- Hunter Henry, yeah, he's been their 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 top receiver actually. So they have been going to the tight end a lot. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Well, 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 let me ask you this then. Well, if if we're going to have like one guy spy, would it be better to spy on uh, Henry or uh, Stevenson, the running back? Uh, I go with Henry right now. I don't, I, okay. I don't think you can spy Stevenson. I think they're just going to count on their defensive line controlling him. But uh, yeah, one of their safeties is going to be on that guy. And that's obviously you know, his big target so far. Schuster hasn't caught very much. You know, they... Uh, He's been uh, going heavily to him. 
Yeah, okay. Ray, um, how disappointed are you in C.J. Uzama, the tight end we signed as a free agent from the Bengals? I don't think they're – I don't think they're using him at his strength either. He's not, he's not just a blocking tight end. He he's a guy who went when you, if you saw him on Cincinnati and I saw quite a bit of him on Cincinnati burrow threw to him quite a bit. And he, he hit him in seams and things. The guy's got pretty decent speed. He's, he's, he's somebody who can make a difference in the passing game. And I'd like to see if they're going to, you know, if they're going to try and utilize him, they, they need to get him more involved in the passing game. And, and that should, uh, to me, that would help Zach too, is to have a tight end that he can go to a little more often. Not all, everything doesn't have to be to the, to the wide receivers to get things going. Uh, Uzama's got pretty decent speed. He's a good size guy. Um, so if they're not going to use him that way, then I'd rather see Ruckert on the field more. Yeah. You know, uh, that or, way. Or I'd rather <clears throat> Tyler Conklin and ruck it over here. Oh, like Conklin too. And, yeah. Yeah. Like and I, I he is such a horrible blocker. He fanned on that first play against Parsons. And then I don't know why uh Hackett, I don't know if you noticed who, 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 who are you talking about? Uzama. He, oh, Uzama. Yeah. he had him split out wide a couple of plays, which made no sense. I would I would have uh Hardman in, McCall Hardman. I think you gotta get him in there. I just I just don't understand that. Ralph. You know, I mean, you got all these guys who were capable of catching the ball, but Wilson's not really capable of getting it to them. So it's going to be frustrating. <laughs> like last last year, you know, he was the quarterback most of the year. You know, it was like everyone was invisible. You know, Garrett Wilson is shaking his head every damn play because, uh, you know, he's not looking his way. And I think, you know, that, that kind of stuff is just going to keep happening. Uh, if Rodgers was in there, he'd be spreading it out. Guys would have it personally. I would prefer a Conklin and Ruckert over Uzama. I'm I think we big, all would. I'm not a big Uzama fan. Yeah. Uh, he's you know he's a good guy in the locker room, but uh, and he's got a nice hair dye. But uh, <laughs> I think yeah, you know, he's got very li- limited uh, talent. But um, so I'm not I'm not shocked uh, at at his lack of use because I mean everyone is being used has a lack of use on this team. McCole Hardman, Marty, I think you're dreaming. I don't think this guy is going to catch ten passes this year. What, I don't what see is- how he's- what is that? I mean, why aren't they using him though? What's I, the reason? I, I use him or not use him. I don't think he can get the ball to him. But uh, I just oh, think, I see. I think, I, think if Rod, yeah. I think if Rogers was in there, he'd he'd be getting the ball to him, and he'd be getting the ball to Randall Cobb. Right. These guys are all useless now. Uh, you know, it's just you know Zach last year, his first year, he all he looked at was Corey Davis. It's the only he was such a had such a crutch for Corey Davis. And then uh, now it's going to be Garrett Wilson, and if and they if they start double teaming him, he's in trouble. You know, he's he's got to find someone else. You, you remember a couple of weeks ago, I said, "What are the chances of uh, like Monday if they lose this game of uh, Garrett Wilson and uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. go get to Joe Douglas's office saying, you uh, know, I, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, but you're going to see Garrett Wilson snarling a, a lot. Uh, uh, I think I think the only other guy that Wilson is comfortable throwing to is Conklin. He seems to like to go to him, which is fine with me. But uh, And I'd like to see him go to uh, uh, Brees Hall, you know, uh, just get the dumb ball of Brees Hall. Their, their screens have all been up the middle. Right. Nothing to the side. I don't know why. I don't know why they're doing that. But, you know, it's very crowded when you throw a screen in the middle. Right. And and, and who did he throw to last time? They said he dropped it, but he, like, fired at the guy. Who was that, Brees Hall? Or... Yeah, it was Brees Hall. Yeah, one of them, yeah, he he didn't have – he he threw it too hard. He's got to have some touch. He's got to <laughs> – it just drives me crazy. Uh, we'll see. All right, let's get back to the uh, – oh, wait, we want to do any predictions? I'm going to go first. Here we go. All right. Because I'm such a big Zach fan. Jets 16, Patriots 13. Oh, you flipped on me. Last week you, you said it's never going to beat Bill Belichick with Zach I, Wilson. I'm, I'm going out of my way. Go yeah. ahead. You go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty pretty much the same. I'll, I'll say uh, 17 to 10. Ray? I'm going to take up for Marty. He'll never beat Bill Belichick. And um Hey, this this game is so painful to think about. I just want to <laughs> get going. You know, they look better. Uh, I'm going to say it's it's going to be like 
17 to 10, no, 17, 20 to 13, New England. Okay, there you go. All right, let's I, I'd be surprised if we give up 20 points, though. So. Yeah. Let's I'd get... be surprised if we give up 20. Right. Whatever. By the way, did you guys saw the tape of that uh, block punt with what the Belichick did last week? The guy ran on the line of scrimmage? To get no, over... was... Oh, was it? He yeah. ran parallel to the line of scrimmage, and somehow he timed it. And then when they hiked it, he went in, and he had so much momentum going, he blocked the punt. Really? Even though he was winning? Yeah. Yeah, you got to see. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Back to the trivia question. Leave it to BB, right, Ralph? He's the innovator. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I wrote something down. Ray, can you remember the last time the Jets, a Jets defensive lineman tipped a pass at the line of scrimmage? Do they ever do that? 19. No. <laughs> I was thinking, I remember like, I remember when Sanchez and even when uh, Darnold were quarterbacks, they would get two passes tipped a game. I can't remember the last time a Jets defense. You know, was- frankly, I think that all teams should be blocking more passes. I think, you know, you can't get to the quarterback all the time, but, you know, right. you, you, I, 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 I'm surprised that they don't the, try that more. But the Jets never do. I don't, I just mm. don't get it. All right. Let's get back to the trivia question as uh, tomorrow we're going to. I feel get- like John Franklin Myers did it last year and then he got called for uh, roughing the passer. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I, I agree with Robert Sala. He he says the rough in the past it should be reviewable. Three years ago, I'd say no, but at this point, you got to do it. I mean, well, considering how, at some some of those roughing calls are, are at such crucial times, it's just yeah. brutal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what was the last time a rough in the past was ever called on a Jets quarterback? I don't remember what. <laughs> hey, I, I remember these plays on the sidelines where the guy's two steps out of bounds and they smash yeah. him right in front of the official. It's, ne- <laughs> it's never called on a Jets quarter. I, I, no. I, I wish Rich Samini, if he's listening, Rich, go back to your next stats generation and come up with a stat about the last, <laughs> let's say, two or three times that they called roughing the passer uh, uh, on a Jets quarterback. It's just unbelievable. All right, here we go. Jets trivia question. Two Jets hold the franchise record for most completed passes in a game. Who are they? And I gave it a number. They both completed 42 passes. I will start with uh, the senator from the great state of Ohio, Ray. Two quarterbacks. I just took a flyer on both. Both of them were overtime games for me. So I said O'Brien and Testaverde. You got one, but let's hear Ralph. Well, yeah, I was going to say O'Brien, but uh, I'm going to say for my two guys, I'll take one. I'm going to go really crazy. I'm going to go Jeff Blake, <laughs> Jeff Blake, and Mike White. No, no, I had one. All right, forty-two in on the September twenty-first, which I guess is an anniversary coming up. Came up, nineteen eighty. Richard Todd was 42 for 60 against the San Francisco 49ers as the Jets lost 37-27. He threw three touchdown passes and one interception. Nice. One interception. How many? 62 passes? 60. 42 for 60. Wow. And how, many, just, how, many, how many interceptions would Zach Wilson throw tomorrow oh, come if on. he threw you know, 62 passes? That, that's, one, that's one record that they don't have to worry about uh, being <laughs> passed. Yeah, over know? under 10. 10 over under if he throws 62 passes oh. tomorrow. Quick, Ray. Uh, and I'll go with the under nine. On, De- <laughs> yeah, on December 6th, 1998, against the Seattle uh, Seahawks, Vinny Testaverde was, and they won 32 21. They was, didn't win that game. They lost that game. They, sure? they No, they, they were, they, they, they actually, they won the game, but uh, it, it was, there was a bad call. If, if, uh, remember, he, he did like a sneak. Oh, yeah. For a yeah touchdown. Yeah, right. And exactly. he wasn't even close to getting into yeah. the end zone. Yeah. <laughs> you remember, he was, Vinny, I do remember that. Is game. that the one that led to the uh, big debate over getting re- uh, replays done? Yes, yes, and- yes, yes. I think that was the key. Uh, it was a, it was a quarterback right. draw, yeah, and he was about two yards yeah, short right. of the game to touch down. <laughs> you're right, Ralph. That's a good get. So I guess they're making up for all the rough in the passes. Yeah. 
But uh, Vinny Testaverde, that game was 42 for 63. Wow. 418 yards, two TDs, and one interception. Wow, very impressive. So that was a, that was a, that, that's a pretty good, that's like a Ralph question. So that's pretty That's good. incredible. And they both almost have the exact same stats. It's they did. amazing. It's yeah. true. Yeah, true. Okay, anything else before we close this out and uh, get ready for the Jets? Yeah, over or under if Zach throws 80 passes tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else? You know, what, surprised, right. what surprised me was I thought you were going to say the Testaverde game was the Monday Night Miracle because right. yeah, all he did yeah. was throw. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. That, that, that'd be interesting. That, maybe I looked up yeah. that stat. That should be interesting. All how, right. many did, how many did Mike White get in that Cincinnati game? He, he, he probably got in the high 30s, I think. Uh, I bet places. he was in the 30s, yeah. Yeah. He did a lot of passing, yeah. All right, for uh, – Ray Clifford, Ralph Sharega, Marty Shupak. And uh, by the way, uh, Jets Rewind is heard on most of or all of your uh, platforms for um, uh, podcasts, including uh, Apple Podcasts and We Want Reviews, Spotify. And uh, just so uh, Ray and Ralph, I don't know if you know this, we're now on uh, Amazon uh, Music. So, oh, yeah. Wow. You could, yeah, we're all over. Plus, we're on. We also- don't have to just speak, do we? Well, I have, a, I have a membership to Amazon. Does that mean I get a free membership? You get a free anyway. Uh, uh, Rewind is always free. And plus, make sure you check out the Shoe Pack Sports uh, YouTube channel where you'll get to see how good-looking all three of us are. So until next time, I'm Marty Shoe Pack. <laughs>